this is a fascinating case. This fellow was a mold inspector. And I'm thinking, well, I know what's wrong with him. That was my assumption, and I was wrong. Um, he comes in, and he had had a spinal tap for his putative Lyme disease, but he only had four bands in the spinal fluid. And they said, no antibiotics for you. And, you know, he begs and begs and begs, and they finally gave him some orals. Now, many people with four bands uh, in spinal fluid would have given him uh, a month of rocephin or longer for putative neuroborreliosis. Uh, I don't have enough data in my practice to argue that point, but I have seen it argued in, in the literature. But, you know, he, he did fine. He's still working as a mold inspector. And you say, well, that putative Lyme, if it was, he was going to convert him from HLA, you know, he should have done something to him. Well, he was doing fine until he had an MRI in 2004. And he had to have some gadolinium with the MRI. And nothing goes on with him for a few years. And he shows up to see me, and he thought he had another tick bite, and he thinks he has a new bite of Lyme disease, and he ignored his skin thickening. He acts like he's got Parkinson's disease. It's, it's too bad that Dr. Rothfeld left because he might have recognized this case here as well. But his vision is, is positive, and I'm thinking, um, what should we do? Another physician had given him cholestyramine, didn't help this guy at all. And I'm thinking, what in the world is going on? So I pushed him a little bit and said, what was the contrast agent that you had with your MRI? And yes, indeed, it was gadolinium, and people with renal failure are described as having scleroderma-like symptoms with negative scleroderma testing uh, after uh, gadolinium. I looked at him and I said, well, wait a minute, this looks like scleroderma. I wonder if it's related to gadolinium. He had his esophageal dysmotility, because he's had a lot of, of aspiration-type episodes as well. Uh, his diffusion capacity was abnormal in his lung but all his autoimmune studies were negative. So he's showing up with some of the things that scleroderma does, but he doesn't have scleroderma. His TGF beta-1 was not that bad at 8,000, uh, and in his home was moldy as can be. So what's going on? Did he not get better from cholestyramine because he has ongoing mold? Well, that certainly is a possibility. Uh, he got his home fixed, he's back on cholestyramine, fixed his visual contrast, so mold was contributing to this illness, but he's still sick, and now his Parkinson's is showing up. Now his skin thickening uh, is still there. So I gave him Losartan, and kind of a long shot, I sent him out to Little Rock, where there's a few papers out of that group, that is a VA, where they've looked at people with this gadolinium-induced systemic sclerosis-like syndrome, and they have some special stains they did on skin biopsies, which I didn't have access to, and I wanted him to do a skin biopsy. And the guy was a little turned off because he didn't have renal failure, said it couldn't be. He sent him to a guy from Hopkins. This is a couple months later. I'm not seeing him. He's still on cold styramine. Hopkins guy says, oh, there's nothing wrong with this man. Why is he here? I go, wait a minute, what's, what's going on? And he brings him down. He comes back to see me. His Parkinson's gone. His skin thickening is just about all gone. Is what, what in the world was happening here? So I think what was going on was basically TGF beta 1. And TGF beta 1 caused endoepithelial to mesenchymal transformation, or EMT. It changes cell type. It's absolutely fascinating to see how cells change. You know, along with that way, you see a lot of people that develop skin uh, and keratoses and seborrheic keratosis and actinic keratosis. And if you look at them, many of these keratoses are showing up almost simultaneously. And the guy comes in and you've got 15 of those and he says, these all appeared in the last few months. I think, well, is there a keratosis growth factor? That you have so much conversion? Because many of these folks, if you pick off one or two or make one or two go away, cut them out, the other ones disappear. So I mean, I have no idea how far we're going with TGF beta 1, but it is definitely changing cell type more often than, than I ever knew about. This girl is in the um, uh, introduction to surviving mold. She lets me use her name. 
Uh, Delaney Liskey is now a little older. She's getting ready to go to a new college. And her parents did not want her to have beta seron. She's unequivocally diagnosed as MS. She's got algoclonal bands in spinal fluid. She's got placking uh, on seen on MRI. And she's got a positive IgG synthesis index. There's no question, very good neurologists see her and they say, all right, you're not that bad. Uh, you need to be treated with MS, for MS. She starts going blind. And the neurologist says, you need to be treated for MS. No, mom says, I'm not giving her those drugs. She takes them to a Lyme litter physician in Virginia who looks at the blindness and treats the child with steroids, helps the blindness, then treats for Lyme, and the child is some better. Still having a problem, still having neurologic events, and um, I get to see her. Well, what's, what's missing? What's missing is that the house was moldy. And the parents thought that little bit of mold they saw back by the garage was no big deal. Her TGF beta 1 was over 40,000. Now, I talked a couple days ago to some of my TGF measurements, and I said, if you see over 40,000, that's likely to be a tube that's not been double spun. That's likely to be a tube with platelet contamination. So I get this result back of over 40,000. I said, this is a lab error. And I had another tube I knew full well was double spun. We sent that off. It was over 40,000, too. So here's the, the exception that, that confirms the rule that always save another specimen. So I gave her cholestyramine to get started. She did not intensify. That doesn't mean she didn't have Lyme, but she sure didn't intensify. Um, home was remediated, and I'll be doggone, just with cholestyramine as her only intervention and cleaning up the home, you know, kids respond much better than adults. Her, her TGF-81 came back less than 3,000, and, and the lesions went away in her brain. And I'm going, man, I can't believe this. Here is a classic MS picture, and boy, did I want her to have another spinal tap. <laughs> and I was not that good a salesman, I must say, but uh, 